Good evening. Good evening. I have the time is 732 and I will call the public hearing and regular business meeting of the mayor and council for the city of Snellville, Georgia, Monday, March 22nd, 2021 to order. Uh, we, Solange DeStang, council member, is absent tonight. She's feeling under the weather and we also sent home our city manager after the work session. He's not feeling well. So we'll start with the invocation, if you all could bow your heads. Heavenly Father, we ask for you to look down upon this city of Snellville, these elected leaders, and all of the uh, participants on our boards, our commissions, and help us, Lord, to discern and make proper and good decisions for the city going forward. Please protect and bless our police department as they go about their jobs every day and put themselves on the line for us. We'd ask a special mention, Lord, also for Bill Kingsbury, the chairman of our planning commission and also a member of our DDA who passed away recently. We also ask for your blessings and for your watchful eye over uh, the town center development all of the workers who will be involved in that project for their safety. And Lord, we just ask for your, your blessings and your watchful eye and your mercy on this city as we go. In your name we pray, amen. Now we'll do the Pledge to the Flag led by Chuck Ross. Thank you, Chuck. And now under ceremonial matters, we have our first uh, proclamation recognizing Mrs. Edna Kofer on her 100th birthday. Do we have any of the family members here? I don't see uh, Mr. Tom Ewing was gonna try to come, who is her brother, uh, but I will go ahead and read the proclamation. Proclamation 2021-05, recognizing Mrs. Edna Kofer on her 100th birthday. Whereas Mrs. Edna Kofer was honored by family and friends on the occasion of her 100th birthday on Thursday, March the 18th of 2021. And whereas she was born in a farmhouse on High Point Road and has resided in, in Snellville area for 91 years and has been a proud resident of the city for 55 years. And whereas Mrs. Kofer was married to James D. Kofer, who was a mayor and council member for the city of Snellville between 1947 and 1952, and mother to son James D. Jack Kofer Jr., who served as a council member from 1974 through 1975. And whereas she is a loving mother to her child, James D. Jack Kofer Jr., and grandmother to her grand two grandchildren, James III and Kelly. And whereas Mrs. Kofer not only faithfully supported her family, but also many community efforts, such as the early school lunch program, the American Legion Auxiliary Post and the Snellville Historical Society. And whereas she is a long-term member of the Snellville United Methodist Church and possibly the oldest living member of the church, as well as the Snellville Historical Society, the Snellville High School Alumni Association, and the Ewing family. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that I, Barbara Bender, mayor of the city of Snellville, Georgia, where everybody is proud to be somebody, do hereby join with our city council and the citizens of Snellville in recognizing Edna Kofer on her 100th birthday and express our gratitude for her support of our city and congratulate her on such a wonderful life. Proclaim this 22nd day of March, 2021. Our second proclamation uh, is actually gonna be postponed until the April 12th meeting. Now we'll move on to the minutes. Is there a motion? 
Motion to approve the minutes of the February 20th, 2021 work retreat and the March 8th, 2021 meetings. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. second. There's a motion and a second. All in favor, please raise your hand. That is five in favor and none opposed. We have no invited, invited guests and no committee or department reports. So now we'll move to the approval of the agenda. Is there a motion? Motion to approve tonight's agenda with one change. Moving new business item letter E, mayor's nomination and council confirmation of Holly Donegan to the Snellville Youth Commission Advisory Board uh, to the very next item before the public hearing. There's a motion to approve the agenda with one change. Is there a motion? I second. mean a second. <laughs> second by Dave. All in favor, please raise your hand. That is five in favor and none opposed. And with that, we will take up new business item E. And I will nominate Holly Donegan to the Snellville Youth Commission Advisory Board and ask for con uh, council's confirmation. All of those in favor of confirming, please raise your hand. That is five in favor and none opposed. Is Ms. Donegan here tonight? If you want to come up, then I'll go ahead and swear you in. Yeah, bring your helper. <laughs> Oh, you have a helper. Yes, <laughs> a really loud helper. <laughs> she might. Yeah, there's a picture. <laughs> Thank you so much. We look forward to seeing you. How about getting a picture with Christine and your dog? Oh, absolutely. Fine. Fine. Okay. He got one. Two helpers, huh?
Oh, here we go. Sorry, I lost my place here for a second. Okay, now we are having the public hearing. We have item A, second reading, RZ 20-04, LUP 20-03, consideration and recommendation on applications by Meritage Homes of Georgia, the applicant, and Crawford F. Juhan Jr., property owner, and Edgen Financial, or Finance LLC property owner, requesting to amend the Snellville 2040 Comprehensive Plan Future Land Use Map from office professional and low density residential to medium density residential. Official zoning map amendment from OP office professional district and BG general business district to RTH single family residential townhome district and request for variance from the front load garage setback requirement for a 101 unit townhome development on a 14.724 acre site having a density of 6.895, no, 6.859 units per acre, located at 2465 Scenic Highway South, Snellville, Georgia, tax parcels 5006002 and 5006003. Um, where did Jason go? Is he here? Oh, you want to come up and say anything? Um, I don't have anything to add except if um, we're going to table it, correct? I think that's going to be the motion to table. Okay. There has already been a public hearing on this item at our last meeting, uh, and it was tabled until this meeting. And I believe there's going to be a motion and a request to table this to the April 26th meeting to allow a few, um, the developer has made some changes to the plan. Um, he's reduced the density a little bit and made some adjustments um, on where things sit. Um, but there's a few more things that the council would like to discuss with him before um, a final vote is taken. So is there a motion? Motion to table. RZ 20-04 and LUP 20-03 until the April 26th, 2021 meeting. Okay, there's a motion. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. All in favor, please raise your hand. That is five in favor and none opposed. Okay, now we'll have second reading RZ 21-01, LUP 21-01, consideration and recommendation on applications by Axis Infrastructure LLC, the applicant, and Britt and Camp LLC, the property owner, requesting to amend the Snellville 2040 Comprehensive Plan future land use map from low density residential to medium density residential an official zoning map amendment from RS30 single family residential district to RS5 single family residential district for a 13 lot single family detached residential subdivision on a 2.765 acre site having a gross density of 4.7 units per acre located at 2106 Lenore Church Road, Snellville, Georgia, and that's tax parcel 5028 Zero zero one, Mr. Thompson. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council. Thank you, public, for being here. Thanks for also doing the heavy lifting once again. It's uh, case number RZ21-01, land use uh, plan amendment 2101 um, as well. They're looking to change from low density residential for the future land use map to medium density residential and change the requested zoning from RS5 single or RS30 single family residential to RS5 single family residential with a density of 4.7 uh, units per acre. As you can see uh, above this the layout of the lot um, that abuts Lenore Church Road with the library um, there to the right on your map and the park there to the north. Um, we be recommended approval based on um, our land use plan analysis, which took into account the 2040 comprehensive plan, um, de um, plans, development goals, implementation strategies, and uh, the 2040 housing goals 
as well as the future land use, housing, and economic development policies that were provided and land use, housing, and economic development sections of the code. So basically, this zoning district allows for a 5,000 square foot lot with a couple of different types of uh, elevational types, some two bedrooms, some three bedrooms that meet current UDO standards. Here's a look at one of them. It also should be noted that within um, the neighborhood is also a requirement for 20% green space. And I believe uh, last time that the applicant was going to present something tonight that showed that um, and possibly a connection to the adjoining park property for easy access to the park amenities. Um, we recommend approval and have um, attached the conditions as per the ordinances presented and would be happy to answer any questions. Are there any questions of counsel for Mr. Thompson? I have a question. This is currently zoned for low density residential and um, yes ma'am. Okay and that is the designation in the 2040 comp plan as well? The 2040 comp plan is low density residential which goes up to four units per acre. The in and of itself the um, the 4.90 which is 0 0.90 acres above that requires a medium density land use. So it does not fit into our future land use. Um, the future plan. land use plan is um, not always a static plan. Um, it does allow for the uh, amendment to the plan and we made that amendment application um, recommendation for approval based on the implementation strategies that we found in the 2040 comprehensive plan. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions of counsel for Mr. Thompson? Okay, is the applicant here tonight? If you could come forward and state your name and address for the record. Sure. Teresa Curry with Access Infrastructure, 1111 Cambridge Square, Alpharetta, Georgia. If you'd like to go ahead and present your the plan. Sure. Yep, staff did a great job explaining what we would like to do. Um, in order to meet the 20% open space, we will end up losing a lot here, this lot three. Um, that will get us to the 20% open space and also allow for connectivity uh, with a sidewalk to get to the adjacent library. Um, we just think this is a great location for single family residential. Uh, it's still a small subdivision. Our density is 4.7 units per acre. Um, and then if you guys have any specific questions, I'm happy to answer them. Okay, any council members that would like to ask a question? Mr. Warner? Um, yes, uh, included in our packet, and I believe online, is suggested floor plans. Mr. Thompson mentioned that these would be two and three bedroom homes, and when I scroll through here, I only see two bedroom homes. Um, is, is our packet incomplete? Uh, let me just double check. The packet that I have as well is also two bedroom homes. Well, I would assume that the, oh, okay. All right, I, I understand what you mean. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. So are we saying that there are two bedroom homes? That's correct. The floor plans are for two bedroom homes. Okay. And there was a condition at planning council last month that anything greater than three bedrooms three bedrooms or more would have at least a two-car garage and we were fine with that condition so there may be some of the two-bedroom homes that only have a one-car garage that is correct there is a floor plan that has a one-car garage with a two-bedroom <laughs> And the driveways will be deep enough to have a car in the driveway as well and not impede passage on the road. 
Yeah, I believe the regulations require 20 uh, setback. Yep. 22 feet setback. Any other questions of council? I'm really concerned about the density um, with the 13 units, and I actually live at Hickory Hills off Green Valley, which is really directly across from this um, low residential. Would there not be a viable option with fewer units for this development? Uh, the pro forma that the owner has run, in order for this to be a viable project, he does need to be at the 12 lot. We were hoping for 13, uh, but in order to make the open space work, we ended up losing a lot, but he, he does need those 12 homes. Okay, any other questions of council? Thank you, Ms. Curry. You're welcome. This is a public hearing on our agenda tonight, so I will open the floor to public comment. If anyone would like to come and either speak for or against this development, please step forward and state your name and address for the record. Kurt Schultz, 2027 Tank Wood Drive. Just for clarity, unless I'm counting wrong, I think that shows 14 up there. <laughs> Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. The one, the one at the bottom of the cul-de-sac is stormwater. Okay, so there's 13. Okay. All right, just wanted to get that clarified. Anyone else would like to speak at public comment? Seeing none, then I will close public comment. And ask council for a motion. Motion to deny LUP 21-01 with reference to ordinance 2021 dash zero seven okay there is a motion to deny is there a second second hey miss curry i have a motion to deny and a second um you we can either go forward with the vote or you could ask for um for the for a withdrawal of the request can I request that we table this till next month just so that we can speak with council members and maybe address their concerns? Sure. Would, um, so we have a motion to deny. If you agree to withdraw the motion to table or- I'll withdraw ahead. my motion. Madam Mayor, as a point of discussion, our agenda for our next public hearing is extremely um, heavy so if we were going to table this matter i would request that we table it to the following month or for 60 days for the simple fact that we have an awful lot on our plate and i certainly don't want to give anybody uh, short, shrift. short shrift yeah thank you i couldn't think of the word Mr. Warner, since we've had the public hearing tonight, um, we could put this on the April 12th meeting. We don't have to go um, unless, unless you want the additional time. Um, no, I'm fine. Okay, so right now I have the motion to deny has been withdrawn. Mr. Warner, you accept that? Yes. So I need a new motion. Motion to table RZ21-02, LUP21-01 until the April 12th meeting. So I have a motion to table to April 12th. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second to table to April 12th. All in favor, please raise your hand. That is five in favor and none opposed. Thank you. Thank you.
Next, we have item C, second reading CIC 21-01, consideration and recommendation on application by Concept Engineering Services, the applicant, and rejoice in the word Church International Ministry, Inc., property owner, requesting a change in conditions from RZ 07-01 approved on February 26, 2007, to allow 95 on-site parking spaces to be constructed between the street and an 8,000 square foot proposed religious assembly building on a 5.47 acre site, zone CI, Civic Institutional District, located at 3079 Lenore Church Road, Snellville, Georgia, and that is tax parcel 5029090. Thank you. I believe there were some um, concerns brought up in the work session that we had some more times to uh, maybe get an opinion from the city attorney about um, uh, any stormwater concerns and to also have the applicant move the dumpster. Uh, I think two weeks should be plenty of time for that since we're going to take on the other one. We might as well um, open it up for that one as well, which has uh, really less, less variables uh, to figure out so that we can get them an answer sooner rather than later. May as well make it a party. Is there a motion? Um, Madam Mayor, if I understand correctly, Mr. Thompson would like us to have the public hearing so we can make a decision. On no, we make a, a table it to the 12th, please. We, but we, oh, we we'd have to have the public hearing anyway. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Yep. That, that's the only issue. Either that or you table to the 26th. Table it to the 26th. It's up to you guys. You got to make the motion. Motion to table CIC 21-01 to the April 26th, um, 2021 meeting. Okay, there's a motion to table to April 26th. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. All in favor, please raise your hand. That is five in favor and none opposed. Okay, a lot of tabling tonight. <laughs> it's kind of unlike this council. Um, so we have nothing under the consent agenda, no old business. Under new business, we have consideration and action on master development agreement update. Um, this is an update. Can you talk about this? Do you know what's on this? Or you don't? This is an update to um, an agreement that we have with our developers that helps to bring in line um, some of the changes, but mainly it was an update to the legal descriptions um, that are being provided in our town center documents. So is there a motion? Motion to approve the master development agreement update as described by the mayor. There's a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. All in favor, raise your hand. That is five in favor and none opposed. Next, we have item B, consideration and action on surplus of parks and rec items. We have uh, six sets of aluminum bleachers and a bush hog pull behind finishing mower to surplus. Is there a motion? Motion to surplus. Motion to surplus the uh, items for parks and rec. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. It's a motion and a second. All in favor, raise your hand. That is five in favor and none opposed. Have item C, consideration and action on surplus of city police vehicles. We have police unit 145 and police unit 152. They're both 2006 Chevrolet Impalas. There is listed on our agenda. <laughs> uh, is there a motion? Motion to surplus the two city police vehicles. There's a motion, is there a second? Second. A motion and a second. All in favor, raise your hand. That is five in favor and none opposed. We have item D, consideration and action on confirmation of temporary easements for town center. 
um, what this is about um, when the LCI project, which was the sidewalk and street improvement project that was done on Wisteria, Clower, and Oak Road several years ago, when that was done, the city acquired three temporary easements from several of the property owners. And those easements long have since expired, but since this property is going uh, to the developers in the town center transaction, they just wanted uh, us to just confirm that those uh, easements have expired and that's all we're doing here uh, tonight. So is there a motion? Motion to confirm the expiration of the easements. <laughs> <laughs> There's a motion. Is there a second? The second. There's a motion and a second. All in favor? Five zero. And none opposed. We've already handled the appointment for Holly. So now we'll move on to council reports. We'll start with council member Todd Warner. I'm used to having my buddy Solange stall for me for a minute while I get my thoughts <laughs> together. So um, it's that time of the month again. So I will be, while everybody else is talking, making my $100 donation to oh, Hank, Hank Reed and let him eat. He provides meals for members of the community who um, find themselves in dire straits and are experiencing food insecurity. He has a great program. You can go online, look him up. He's on Facebook. He has a website. He is a 503C organization. If you could find it in your heart and in your wallet to support him, I would greatly appreciate it. Um, one other thing, if I might. Uh, we have, or I don't know about the rest of council, but I know I have been experiencing an incredible amount of inquiry about the traffic cameras that happened to be in Snellville's school zones. And I would just like to reiterate to all my fellow citizens that as long as we are not going more than 10 miles an hour over the posted speed limit, you're not gonna get a ticket. So please be aware that in a school zone, while school is in session, we are expected to act like adults and watch our speed because even though the buses may not be loading and the parents may not be picking up, there may be children, like I was in high school, that wander off and then come back and they might be on our roadways, and we certainly don't want to have any incidents. Um, one of the reasons behind this is we have a high proportion of people traveling through our city who seem to be unaware that there are laws that govern the way you drive behind the wheel. You're not allowed to be on your cell phone. You're not allowed to drive whatever speed you want. Surprisingly, you're not even allowed to make a right-hand turn when it says you're not allowed to make a right-hand turn. So if you would all join me in freshening up this spring, not only our community, but also our driving habits and skills, and maybe go on the Georgia Department of Transportation's website and review the traffic laws. I know I've just recently gone through um, on my third child getting their driver's license, and some of those laws kind of surprised me. So maybe, like me, y'all need a little update in what the laws are. So please review the website and uh, feel free to contact one of the, my fellow council members if you have any concerns about the traffic cameras. Thank you. Some have experience with them. <laughs> Thank you, Todd. Council member Linsky. Somehow I feel like I was being lectured right there. <laughs> I'm not quite sure. Um, congratulations to Holly Donegan uh, for her addition tomorrow. Snellville Youth Commission Advisory Board, we are now nine strong, we have nine strong members uh, to advise our youth commission. So 
Uh, we'll be looking to increase the student membership uh, by expanding the application period. We're just feeling that um, within a month, we could be at the conclusion of the COVID situation and uh, we could be really uh, able to do some more outreach with the high schools and bring in some new members with face-to-face -face interviews. So for the, for the next school year, we'll be up and running even stronger than now. We do have a virtual meeting for Youth Commission tomorrow night that's gonna focus on changing college admission standards during COVID. So we're hoping the students will enjoy that. And please keep Solange Destang in your thoughts as she's struggling with some health problems. So hopefully she'll be back with us uh, at our next meeting. Thank you all for coming out tonight. Thank you, Christy. Council Member Schultz. I'm sure that the uh, mayor's going to say something about this, so I don't want to steal her thunder, but I, uh, we had a very important groundbreaking last Thursday, and I want to personally express my thanks to the uh, Snell Family Foundation for the very generous donation of $500,000 that we will use very wisely in the, um, in the Grove area, and that was just a just a wonderful donation on their part, and it's very, very, very appreciated. The other thing, I, I wanted to just go back and mention the um, Edna Kofer um, birthday proclamation. Um, I used to sit behind her in church every, every week, and um, but one thing I didn't realize about her that I learned in the proclamation tonight was that she was um, involved in the early school school uh, nutrition program in uh, Gwinnett County, I assume. And some of you know that before, um, when I was working, before, before, before uh, retiring, I worked for the school nutrition program, both in Gwinnett County and for the Georgia Department of, of uh, Education. And it is, it's a program very dear to my heart because I think it, it does so much to prepare students for, for uh, learning every day because hungry children cannot learn. And I was just very interested to hear that she was involved in the, in the early birth, I assume, of the school nutrition program locally. So um, hats off to Ms. Kofer on her 100th birthday. Thank you. Thank you, Gretchen, and Mayor Pro Tem Emanuel. Thank you. I want to jump on what Todd said. As the uh, recipient of many fast driving awards, uh, <laughs> there's really no reason to be going 42 miles an hour through the school district uh, section of Skyland and uh, 47 on Highway 78. So. All it takes is looking at signs, and I think part of the problem is people look at the signs and they say, oh, no, there's no police officers here, so I can go whatever speed I want. Uh, you know, pay attention, and we have had issues with kids running across the street. It's, it's not something that was done arbitrarily. It's, it's done to enforce the speed limits to protect the, the kids who are there. And it is important that you pay attention, and if I can drive through without getting a ticket, anybody can. <laughs> and uh, I don't want to get too deep into the groundbreaking, but I've been out taking pictures with the drone, and it is amazing what you see from the air, and uh, Brian will be posting some of those on Facebook, so keep an eye out for that. And the progress is, is really impressive, and they've made a lot of buildings go away that I thought were going to take days and weeks, and they're gone. So uh, keep an eye on that. The, uh, the Grove is gonna be just an absolutely great addition to the city and can't wait to see it open. Thank you, Dave. Um, on the speed cameras, in the upcoming Spirit Magazine issue that just went to print and should be in people's mailboxes just before Easter, there is a page article on all the details of the ins and outs of the speed cameras. So it's everything that everybody should need to avoid a ticket in that area. So it's all the behind the scenes details that you can outsmart the police. Exactly, <laughs> took us a whole page. 
But it was interesting, you know, after talking to the chief uh, about the speed cameras, if you get caught by the speed camera, it's an $80 ticket. If you get pulled over by a police officer doing the same speed, regardless of whether school's in session, it's a $200 ticket. And if the lights are flashing and you get pulled over by a police officer, then it's a much higher ticket. Um, but if the lights are flashing and you get caught by the speed camera, it's still the $80 ticket. I got all that right. The chief's nodding his head, everything I'm saying. For the, for the first one. So yeah, for the first one. So um, if you're gonna speed, hope that you get the speed camera and not one of our police officers. Um, on a sad note, I would like to mention Bill Kingsbury. He has been very involved in the city, very engaged in the town center um, development and work as, as a member of the Downtown Development Authority. And then he's also been on our planning commission and was the planning commission chairman uh, for the past several years. And he passed away somewhat unexpectedly uh, just a week and a half ago. So he, it, it hurt that he wasn't able to be here for, uh, for the groundbreaking. Um, but I really think it paid off having him in heaven because the storms subsided. We had sunny uh, weather, and then after the groundbreaking was over, the clouds came back and the wind picked up again. So I really think Bill had a hand in that. Um, but I do want to offer our deepest sympathies to his wife, um, and, uh, and may he rest in peace. The groundbreaking was a fabulous success, I think. Um, you do see the demolition that's going on now. Um, I've been warned by the uh, project superintendent with Hodges and Hicks, who is the demolition company, that it's gonna look like a lot is happening for right now, and then it's gonna look like nothing's happening for quite a while, and then all of a sudden, we're just gonna start seeing things come up out of the ground. So. Uh, just be prepared that it looks like there's a whole lot of progress and then it looks like it's going to grind to a halt here. But the groundbreaking was really great. Even though we pushed back the time, we still had a really good turnout and I um, and, uh, was just very pleased with how it went and appreciate all of the hard work of the council and the city staff, Butch Sanders, um, and everyone here to, uh, to get us to that point. And then as uh, Gretchen mentioned, the Snells, the ER Snell Family Foundation did present a very large check um, to the city for improvements more on the cultural arts side of things uh, for the down, for the Grove. And um, very, very pleased to have that type of support here for the Grove. Um, and especially coming from the Snell family that they are as committed to this project as they are um, means a lot to me that I, I feel like we are doing the right things and they're very pleased and excited about the development as well. Um, so that will be all for my mayor's report. I will open the floor to public comment if anyone would like to come and state your name and address for the record. Come on up. My name is Rose Purdy. I live at 2270 Burlington Lane, Snellville, Georgia, 30078. Uh, I thank you for honoring uh, Ms. Colfer. She was my friend, she is my friend, although she can't hear me anymore and I can't visit her. Uh, but I did until she fell and broke her arm and, and uh, isn't able to get therapy right now. I talked to Jack. Uh, last week and about the birthday party they gave her for uh, her birthday and he re asked me not to come because it was going to be very uh, with the family there and just the window to look through he said it's, it's gonna depress you he knows I'm a crybaby so uh, I sold my house in Stockton Walk to buy her house and I've lived there a year now uh, and I there's so many memories in there of her when I visited her and took care of her plants and took care of her 
whatever needed to be taken care of when she went to assisted living. Uh, I thank you for that. I'm also an alumni of the uh, speeding ticket bunch. <laughs> I was on my way to- Is that what we're doing now? We're starting an alumni group? A club. <laughs> a club. I was on my way to between to take a 21-year-old young man that my daughter and son-in-law had taken in uh, and uh, he was trying to get his driver's license and I was taking him to between and I was telling him about the tickets y'all had gotten <laughs> and I said I've got to watch out for that sign and I didn't know that I was speeding at the time so until I got the letter with eighty dollars due so thank you for allowing me to speak thank you thank you Miss Purdy anyone else Melvin Everson, 1725 Winding Creek Circle, Snellville, Georgia. Marion Council, and thank you all so much. First off, thank you for a wonderful groundbreaking ceremony. And I'm here to officially invite you, and you will receive an invitation from President Cannon Gwinnett Tech. We will officially hold our groundbreaking ceremony June 10th, 10 o'clock a.m. Food, June 10th, 10 o'clock a.m. The commissioner will be there along with the governor and you all will be invited to that. And this is a culmination of a renovation of Building 100 along with our new IT building. Total project for both of those projects, total cost, 40.8 million. So we're very excited about it. And you'll be able to see the building off of 316, three stories, also housed in there, which is the new and upcoming thing now. I didn't realize how big it was. Esports, it is big. It is big, and we are hiring a program director for that as I speak. So June 10th, 10 o'clock, you will receive a formal invitation from Dr. Kenneth. Thank you. And how many tickets have you received, Mr. Evers? No. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> Yet, so far. Okay, seeing no other public comment, we are going to do an executive session, so I've got to read a bunch of gibberish here. Oh, no. Melissa, am I, am I good to read this one that says work session at the top? During the regular meeting of the mayor and city council of Snellville, Georgia, Mayor Bender announced that certain matters should be discussed in a closed session of the meeting and, and asked council to advise the city with respect to closing the meeting. City Attorney Chuck Ross advised the city of the following reasons to close the meeting. Litigation. To discuss pending and or potential litigation settlement claims, administrative proceedings, or other judicial actions, which is exempt from the Open Meetings Act, pursuant to OCGA Section 50-14-2-1. Upon a, count, a motion of Council Member. Emanuel. And seconded by Council Member. Schultz. The meeting was closed with the following council members and the mayor present and voting. Mayor Barbara Bender, yes. Mayor Pro Tem Dave Emanuel. Yes. Solange Destang is absent. Christy Linsky. Yes. Gretchen Schultz. Yes. Todd Warner. Yes. Thereupon, all persons left the room, but we will ad oh. adjourn to the community room. Where we can stay here? Okay.